Welcome guys, thank you for being with us today. Thank Welcome so to France. Do you know French movies, French cinema, French actors, or like none at all? I, I, I... Charlotte Rampling. I Charlotte Rampling, okay. Yes, right. Amazing uh, actress. Catherine Deneuve. Catherine Deneuve. Deneuve. Fabulous. The great Catherine. Uh, uh, Gerard Depardieu, right? I mean, he's like a... Who? <laughs> Gerard Depardieu. Gerard Depardieu. Gerard Depardieu. Uh, with, um, last time, I was in uh, Belgium. Yeah. And I was meant to go see... What was the movie that... Um, Bridget Everett? Bridget Everett. Yeah. What is the movie that she did with... Um, uh, uh, Dumpling. Dumpling. Uh, yeah. Oh, no, with, with the actress. Uh, Patty Cakes. Patty Cakes. I didn't say that. In Brussels, I was meaning to go to Patty Cakes, right? So I show up late to a movie theater. And Patty Cakes is being sold, is sold out. So uh, we um, were like, we had this grand idea. We're like, okay, we're gonna buy a ticket to Bun Pum. Okay, Bun and, Bun, then, yeah. and then sneak into Patty Cakes. <gasps> Literally tried to sneak into Patty Cakes, and truly every seat was sold out. So I sat through Bun Pum. Oh my god, did you understand anything? Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, because Bun Pum is like an independent movie of friends. With, okay, my god. <laughs> Quite a good story, yeah. Bun Pum. <laughs> Okay, but I'm yes. in eighty this year. Um, what was your first art process Batman when you were a kid? Was it the Tim Burton movies? Yes. Or, yes. Wait. Which ones? Uh, Batman. That, yeah. Yes. Okay. And you? It was the uh, the Adam West series because when I was a, when I was a kid, they would show the reruns after Scooby Doo every day after school. So that was when I, I was first introduced to Batman. And you clicked into the universe like immediately. Well, I sort of. In I, you know, I, I appreciated the show, and I was very young. I appreciated the show in, in a campy way, but it was also really the, the Batman movie in 1989 that really changed my... It just changed my idea of what comic books were, and that, like I, that they could be serious, and that they could, you know, really explore dark themes, you know, it was really... And you know what? We have Tim Burton on our show in like a few weeks. If you had any question for Tim Burton watching this camera, what would it be? I know, Twiggy thing. Oh, uh, uh, question I for know. Tim Burton. Can you introduce me to Danny DeVito, please? Because <laughs> okay. I would like to meet him. Role model, of <laughs> How about you? Um, I, want, I would love to know how much of the production design was from your imagination versus like an actual production designer or art designer. Uh, Art director, and if you work with that person consistently, or if that was like a, just someone for that world, because I, I think that the production design of that particular film is so exciting and so beautiful and interesting, right? Exactly. But in Gotham as well, the, the photography is kind of amazing. What did you learn, uh, not as actors, but as uh, cinema lovers, about being in Gotham as for the technique is concerned? Because I think that the use of photography, the use of light in a TV series, mm -hmm. Uh, it's quite detailed. So, what did you learn from that? From these five scenes, I just I learned uh, the camera could be its own is its own character in the scene in a way. Like you learn to relate to the camera and also just the complexity of the shots that we were doing. Um, it becomes a very uh, it's it's like choreography. It, it becomes like a dance that you're doing with with the lens. And uh, yeah, I just it really um, I never had that experience before. I uh, and yeah, that, that was what I wanted. Yeah, we had some masterful cinematographers and camera operators, and we had the privilege, of, the, our camera A operator on that show was with us all five years. Okay. Gerard Sava. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> he, was, he was like such a teacher to us, but you know, it was our first big show, and he was always incredibly, incredibly helpful. Because it's so um, kind of dramatic and creative and operatic and scale and the lighting is very intense, we got to like sort of learn how to use that to tell our story. And Gerard, our camera A operator, was so helpful in like making minor adjustments so that like shadows, the way shadows fall on our face. What was uh, for each of you the scene that was most difficult to shoot, uh, not as an actor, but as an actor that has combined the technique as well? For me, it's it was always the uh, the, the the action scenes, the stunt scenes, the fight choreography scenes. I, I found that. I, that was the most challenging to me because, again, you're riding this line between, you know, it's it's not real, but you're trying to make it look as real as possible, and so it, and just you know making sure that your fellow actors are safe, um, that you're safe. It's a very hard thing to do because again, you get in the moment and the emotions. Again, it's not real, but the emotions feel re as real as they can. And uh, yeah, and so just you know, staying focused and staying safe, I found that to be a challenge. Yeah. When we're rehearsing to like build a scene, 
and then shoot it. It goes so quickly on TV. How many times? Like, how, how long do you have to rehearse? Like two sequences to five, 30 minutes or 20 minutes for a scene? Mm, maybe like 15 minutes or something. Okay. Like, you know, it's, yeah, so just, you basically... Just, you're, you're moving as fast as you can. You're so, piecing yeah. something. I mean, you do all of your work ahead of time, so you show up and you just sort of like... It's really about just finding your place in space and figuring out where you're going to be, where the other characters are going to be, understanding the environment, looking at props, and then like making a decision, and then you have to move, uh, because it's, it's an expensive show, and it has to go. Over the five years learning how to do that quickly, there was a scene toward the very end of season five where I was living in this space, and I was like, I, the scene wasn't sort of, I didn't know exactly how to deliver the scene, and it, while I was in the space, I had this realization, I was like, there used to be a mirror in this space, and if I had this, this would like unlock this scene for me. Emotionally? Uh, yeah, emotionally, because like, it was so much about like, talking to him, but also like, recognizing who I am myself, and Ed has like a really particular relationship with mirrors in the show, and I, like it was just this split second decision, I was like, I need that mirror. I want a mirror, I want a full length mirror in here so that I can be talking to him and then turn to myself and see myself. And it was like, there were moments where, uh, not to spoil anything, but there are weapons in the space and we need to not know who has weapons. And if I'm distracted staring at myself, I would miss that someone else would have something. Uh, so that was just like, there were moments like that where you, you figure out how to like trust your instincts in space and work very quickly understanding like how to sort of like make a scene. How long do you have the speed before the shooting? Like a week before, two weeks before, so you can prepare? Uh, you know, it would depend because we, we've gotten rewrites all the way yeah. up to the day that we're shooting. Um, but yeah, it's usually about a, a week to two weeks, I would say, that the scripts would come out before we started shooting. Early on in the season, you have your scripts a little bit yeah. further in advance. As the season yeah. goes on, it just gets closer yeah, gets and closer to shooting day. If you had to choose, um, I'm going to ask two movies, each of you, that for you define cinematography and the scene in this movie that we're going to be showing, what would it be? Oh, I. Uh, well, okay. Well, the first one that comes to mind is uh, I, I think of uh, Stanley Kubrick and The Shining. I, okay. mean, I just I, I think of the tracking shot following the kid on the on the on the, the big wheel. Uh, I just yeah I think that. I think that's one of the most brilliant, like, I, like iconic moments in, cin in cinema. And then, uh, this is a, I don't mean, to, just I, I would say, um, Citizen Kane because that yeah, changed. Yeah. We've never had that notion. That right. changes. That, that <laughs> completely changed the way people, or, or filmmakers approach scenes. And again, like I said before, about the camera being its own character, and and telling a story through where you put the camera. I mean that broke them all. That that's you know everything that we see in cinematography now is because of what happened in the film. So. Okay, first of all, this is the most intense film studies question I've ever had. <laughs> yeah, ever. I go to school, and we're at a convention. We're being asked about like this is amazing. Are you in film school? <laughs> I'm not in film school. I'm doing um, uh, uh, a TV show where I receive people like you, but where I want people 15 to 24 year old people to watch all movies. So every time I'm like, please make them all. Watch these movies. Uh, yes. Um, since you said uh, Kubrick, they, recently in New York they were screening uh, a 70 millimeter version of 2001: A Space Odyssey. Yeah. Uh, for its anniversary, and they showed it on the IMAX screen. Fucking insane! <laughs> it was amazing. It was amazing. Uh, but that movie will like mess you up. Yeah. It's a wild trip. You watched it at night or during the day? I watched it at night. Okay, good. Yes. That like that film is insane. What they do, it's insane. But uh, when when you toward toward the end of the film, uh, and he takes you to the this room. It's like the floor is lit up, and everything is like in quadrants and like squared off. It's such. Uh, it's such a. I'm trying not to curse. I just keep wanting to. You can. It, you know, oh, okay. I was gonna say it's a mind fucked. Um, and the way that the light plays um, in that space and it feels sort of, um, it's so grounded because of the geometry of the space but it's like otherworldly at the same time it's very cool. And would you have another one? 
probably something from Ace Ventura, you know? <laughs> one of the finest... <laughs> one of the... <laughs> Magnifique. <laughs> the finest <laughs> films I've ever seen. <laughs> Personally. Uh, Todd Haynes. Um, oh, for fuck's sake. Uh, Julianne Moore. What, the name is, what is the name of that film? <laughs> Far From Heaven. Far From Heaven. The use of color and the use of texture in, in fabric and how it plays with... Denis Quaid, no? Yes. Yeah. And how it plays like with emotion and what they do with color and light playing yeah. against emotion. Yeah. Or like the the, uh, the kitchen that's like all yellow, which is just like joy and warmth and comfort. And she's like, her life is... She is devastation and darkness in this warm, lovely, yellow kitchen with this warm light streaming in is like so heartbreaking. It's so, so heartbreaking. That is like a stunning movie example of like production design and direction and cinematography and acting, and and acting like coming together to just break your world. And my last question, if you had to give any advice to film school just I'm students. exhausted. <laughs> I'm exhausted I'm from my this brain. I'm just kidding. <laughs> if you had to give uh, any advice to film students watching us uh, being in film school, what would it be? As an actor, uh, as a cinematographer, what would it be? Be an account. Alright. <laughs> Get off your phone. Get off social media. Be, create your own, your own dreams, your own visions. Don't don't listen to the just don't cut the chatter, cut the noise out of your life, and get off your phone and live a real life and talk to people in real life. That's the biggest lesson you'll ever learn about how to be a true artist. Um, if you don't have more passion than this person <laughs> about film and asking talk to him. deep questions <laughs> about film, you're just not gonna make it. You're not gonna make it. Uh, you. <laughs> you You need to be, you know, it, it, it requires, uh, it requires a sort of like, uh, just like, it, 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 unless you're, unless I guess you're lucky, the people that like are innately just like old, old and passionate about it, uh, they're, they're the most exciting people to be around in the industry and they kind of like flourish and, uh, you know, listen to that, that's not you, don't do it, be an accountant. And that's the end of the exhausting interview. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. À Paris, Lyon, Marseille, Lille, Bordeaux et partout dans le monde. Écoute VL sur vl-media.fr et sur ton app.